In this video, we're going to look at the circuit design and analysis capabilities of Tinkercad, a free web-based tool that is provided by Autodesk, a CAD company. Tinkercad has CAD on it, as you would expect, but it also has um, a circuits uh, component that we can use to help us understand how to program and use microcontrollers better. So the way to use Tinkercad is as follows. Go to www.tinkercad.com and create an account. And then once you've logged in, which I've done, you're put in this window. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to the menu on the left and I'm going to select circuits. And when I do, I see that I have uh, the option to create a new circuit or perhaps go back and use the circuit that I've already built because I've used this before. But I'm not going to look at any of the old ones. I want to create a new one. So when I hit create, I'm given a new workspace to work in. Just close that down. Most of it is blank because I haven't built anything yet. And when I go into this new workspace as a default, off to the right, there is an area that shows components that I can select and use to build my circuit. Now, when I go over here on the right and I want to use this menu, um, I can use it in a couple different ways. One is just to go into the search box and then I can select items that I want to use, or I can search for components using Control F, or I can actually scroll down through this menu to see what I want to pick. What I'm going to do is start with an Arduino. I'd like to use an Arduino because that's what I've been doing and exploring how to use microcontrollers. So when I select Arduino, the thing that comes up is the Arduino Uno. I've been working with a Nano, but that's not an option in Tinkercad, so I'm going to have to use the Uno. And that's okay because the Uno functionally is, for our purposes, equivalent to the Nano. We can program it using the same programs. The same pens do the same things, so it's going to be fine. So I'm going to choose this now. I click on it, and then I move my mouse to the left, and there's my Arduino. And as long as I keep moving, 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 it's going to keep moving the Arduino anywhere I want to put it. Okay. Um, when I've decided that I'm going to just plunk it someplace, I'm going to put it here. I click on it and it stays. You'll notice that a couple of things happen. First of all, you may have noticed that there was a connector that isn't connected on the left side that's a little USB um, connector that's supposed to go into the connection box here. And it's not connected right now because the idea is that this Arduino is not connected to anything. And that's fine. Once we get going and we want to actually use it to do the simulation, it will be connected. The other thing that happens is once I click and place this um, component, um, a box opens up that tells me what the component is and suggests that I can give it a name, which I'm going to do right now. And I'm just going to call this ARD1. Okay? And then if I want to get rid of that box, I just click someplace in the workspace and it goes away. The next thing that I want to add in is a breadboard because I want to build circuits there. So I start typing breadboard and I find if I click on breadboard I have a few possibilities. I have a small breadboard, a mini one, and then a regular breadboard. I'm going to pick the small one so I just click on it and then I slide my mouse to the left and then the breadboard starts sliding over. Okay, And here's the breadboard. And I'm going to position it so that it's near the Arduino. Not too close, but you know, close enough. And then I click on it, and when I do, then again, a window opens up inviting me to give this breadboard a name. And I'm going to call it BB. Oops, yeah, BB. Meaning breadboard. Okay, and then I'm going to click in the works area, the workspace, and I've got my breadboard. And it's just like any other breadboard that I've used. Uh, I now want to put some components in. So the circuit that I want to build is going to be the blink circuit, which I've already built. 
um, with real components and now I want to simulate it. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go over here and choose the components that I need. One of the things that I'm going to need is a resistor. And actually a few different options come up. I have the fixed resistor and then I have the potentiometer and the photoresistor. What I want to do is choose a fixed resistor. And once I've clicked on it and I slide my cursor over here, there it is. It appears. Okay, now what I want to do is put it in some of these holes here. Um, but I see that the resistor's default position is vertical. And that's going to be a problem because if I place it in the circuit vertically, it's going to be um, in the same row. Uh, the both terminals will be in the same row, meaning that I can't connect it to anything else. It's going to not be connectable. It's connected to itself. Um, and this is not how it's going to function, not how I want to use it in the circuit at all. So I have to make it so that the two terminals, one on each end, actually um, connect to um, different nodes, okay, because they're both connected to the same node right now. For the moment, what I'm going to do is leave this resistor where it is, and I click on it and that places it and again I get the uh, window that pops up that asks me to specify things about it so I'm going to call this resistor R1 and then I need to set the resistance. The default resistance is 1 kilo ohm. I would like to make this a 220 ohm resistor so I type in the 220 into that window and then for the units I come over here and I select ohms. Okay, So that's great but I want to change the position of that resistor. I want to make it so that I rotate it 90 degrees. And the way I can do that is by coming over here and using the rotate option. Now right now the resistor has been selected. It's outlined in blue which means that if I click on rotate the thing that's going to rotate is going to be that resistor. So let me do that. So I start rotating it and it does indeed rotate 90 degrees um, clockwise which is great. Um, the only thing is that when I do that, it turns out that the left terminal is now not connected to anything. The right terminal is in a hole, which is what I want, but the left terminal is not. So what I'm going to do is use my keys, my arrow keys that are in the lower right-hand corner of my keyboard and try to move these things over. So now terminal 1, as specified here, okay, is actually in row 1 in hole B and terminal 2 is in row 5 and it's in uh, hole B as well okay which is great and that means that they're now attached to two different nodes the row 1 node and the row 5 node on this side of the divide okay this gulf that's between these two halves of the of the uh, breadboard now I'm going to get a an LED because I want to attach that next oops attach it next LED Okay, and there's an LED. Okay, and here we have a couple of options. The one I want is this one on the left. I'll drag it over here. And um, the, th the way that this thing works is um, the bent leg is the long leg or the anode and the straight leg is the cathode. Now I have a little bit of a problem in that I would like the cathode, actually the anode to be in the same row as the right terminal of the resistors, which would be row 5. And I'd like the cathode to be in, in another row. Now I could just move them over here like this and that would place the anode in row 5 and it would put the cathode in row 4, but I would like instead to rotate this because I would like the cathode to be in a row that has a higher number. I'd like it to be to the right of the rest of the circuit. Um, so I will place the, well, I'll place the LED here and really the thing I want to do, uh, I want to move it over a little bit I think, uh, first before I do that I got to come up here and name it since I've clicked on it it's now placed, I'll call it LED1 and I can change the color if I wish. Uh, I'm going to leave this one red. Now having done that, this is selected, I'm going to rotate it Okay, and now uh, the long leg is in row 4, which is not the right row. I need it to be in row 5. 
So let me just move it over using my keys. And I think it's in row five now. Let me just check that. I believe so. Yes. I think so. It's still, it's not very clear though. I think what I'll do now is I'll move it down. So I'll use the keys to do that. Great. Okay. All right. So now I can see um, that terminal two or the right hand terminal of this resistor is in the same row as the anode of the LED. And that's what I want. So those two elements are connected in series. They share a node. There's nothing else that is um, sharing that node. No other components are in that row. And that's exactly how I want things. Um, now I need to connect the Arduino to the resistor. And I need to do it at pin 13. Um, I will place the mouse directly above pin 13 or on pin 13 and when it's when it shows a red square that means that I've selected the right one I've selected one of the pins and below that is the label of the pin that's illuminated it's D13 so I will click there and then I'm going to drag my mouse over to row 1 it doesn't matter which of these uh, holes I choose. The ones that um, are below the red square are all have green circles on them and those show the ones that are connected at that node. So I will click here and right now the wire that's connecting these two things is selected and both ends are circles. So that means that if I want to do something to this wire this would be the time to do it. One thing I want to do is change the color of the wire. I'm going to change it to blue just for fun. Okay. All right, now that wire connects the uh, Arduino to the resistor and the resistor is then connected to the diode and now I want to connect the diode to ground. When I look at the Arduino, I see three pins that are marked ground. One of them is the pin just to the left of pin 13 and then there are two other ground pins on the lower side of the the Arduino. So I'm going to pick one of these lower pins because if I use the one up here as ground, I'm going to have two wires that are almost on top of each other and I'd like to spread things out a little bit. So all I need to do is connect the cathode um, to ground to make a complete circuit. And I see that I can use any one of these holes to do that um, because all of them are connected to the cathode. And I'm going to pick the top one here and so I will click on it and then I will bring my mouse over to this ground pin right here and click on it and when I've done that currently this wire between uh, row 5 and ground is selected and again I'm going to change the color I'm gonna make this one yellow okay, and then I can tell the wires apart easily so I've got these things connected now. I have the Arduino connected to the resistor, the resistor connected to the LED, the LED connected to this wire that goes back to ground. So I have a complete circuit and I'm almost ready to go. I don't need any components right now so I'm going to click on this arrow to put the components away. The thing that I do need still is I need some code. So. I want to find some code that I can use to program this um, microcontroller setup, this system. So when I click on code, the default setting for code is blocks. Now blocks, that's a form of pseudocode that I do not want to use. Um, I want to use the C++ text code. So in order to get that, I need to go to this menu where it says blocks and I want to select text. Okay. Now it appears that blocks are the default um, and I don't know why that is. It may be because it's easier for people that know nothing about programming, maybe kids to use it, but uh, we're going to use the text because we want to learn C++ and we can do things in a little bit more adult sophisticated way. So let's choose continue. Okay. And here we have the blank sketch that we've seen before. This looks pretty much like the one that we used to uh, program the real 
Arduino and the real components. Uh, the big difference between this version and the one that we used before in the Arduino IDE is that this one really doesn't have very many comments in it at all. But that's okay because the comments are skipped over by the compiler anyway in creating the compiled version of this program used by the Arduino. Um, we can use the same um, sketch to program the um, Arduino Uno as we used for the Nano. It works fine. Um, the big difference, not having the comments, is fine because the comments here are very minimal. It's not We don't really need many. We know what this sketch does. So the way we're going to do this is um, just take the sketch, and by the way, this is an editor that's just like the IDE. We can navigate around it. We can put the mouse inside. We can make changes. For example, let's say I want to change the delay to two seconds, where I have the LED um, set to high, meaning the light will be on for two seconds and then off for one second. I'll try that. So once I've made that change, which I don't have to save out in any way, I can just do this. Um, as soon as I click on Start Simulation, it will do the equivalent of uploading it to the Arduino. I mean, that's not really what's happening here because it's a simulation, but it's effectively the same thing. And take a look at what happens on the left side of the workspace um, to the connector, the USB connector to the board. So if I click on Start Simulation, then what happens is I get a connection, okay, which means that it implies that this would be the point where we would connect the Arduino to power. And then what I'm going to do is click on code, which will make the code go away. I mean, it's running on the board. It's been uploaded in a sense to the board. And now what we have is we have the blinking LED, just like we had with this live circuit. So this is pretty nice. Um, it's a nice way to simulate something. It's a nice way to try something out um, to see if you can get it to work. Um, work out all where the positions where you want to put the pins and everything's going to work fine. You don't have to worry about um, making a mistake and um, causing two wires that aren't supposed to touch each other to touch and then maybe frying something or destroying your Arduino or anything like that. It's all going to be fine. If, if, if you make a mistake here, it just won't work. Um, so this is a nice way to work with it. Um, if you don't have your kit with you, you can figure out how to put stuff together and then later put the components together. It's very flexible that way. So we can do this and get the light to work. Um, it's all great, but let's stop the, stim the simulation and do a little bit more. Um, I want to talk a little bit about how to um, use the voltmeter, the ammeter, the multimeter really um, in this circuit to make measurements, voltage and current measurements. Um, now the multimeter is considered to be a component, so let's go find it here in the inventory of components. Multimeter is right here, so I'm going to click on that and bring it out. I'm not going to place it on the board, I'm going to place it above the board. Put it right here. Okay, and. The default for the multimeter, now that I've placed it, it's going to show its name. I'm going to put in MM for my name. And the default mode is voltage, meaning it's going to function as a voltmeter. I can change it if I want to measure current, saying amperage, or I can have it measure resistance. But for now, we're going to just leave it on voltage, so it's a voltmeter. All right, now let's look at these um, pins, basically they're pins, or these these uh, leads, okay, where we would connect wires. So we have uh, the one on the left, on the one on the right is the positive, where the positive lead is, comes out, and then on the one on the right is where the negative lead comes out. So let's say we would like to measure the um, voltage across the resistor. The, uh, where the place that we put these um, leads does matter. Um, what we'd like to do is have the positive terminal of the voltmeter connect to the positive terminal of the resistor. Now, what terminal is positive? We assume that current flows into the positive terminal of a resistor. So that means that whatever terminal the current's flowing into for a resistor, that's the positive terminal. In this particular circuit, um, we know that because there's one source and then we have uh, the resistor and the 
LED connected in series to it and then the wire goes back to the source. We know that the current is flowing out of the source, out of pin 13, through this wire, through the resistor, then through the LED, and then back. Okay, that's the only path possible. That's the direction it's going to go in. So that means that it's entering into terminal 1 of the resistor first. So that'll be the positive terminal. So we want to connect this positive lead of the voltmeter. So we'll click on it here. Okay. Oops, i got to click on it. There we go. Click on it and then drag down a wire and we want to have this go into uh, row 1, one of the holes in row 1. Okay, so that's that'll work right there. Okay, whoops, nope, it went in the wrong one. Oh, no, it's going to go here. Okay, hopefully that'll work. Yeah, I think it's in, oh, I'm not sure it's in the right place. I better, if I make a mistake like this, I think I've connected it wrong. All I have to do is select the, the item and then delete it. I'll start again. I'm going to go back up here. Um, I deleted it by just typing control Z when, once I had selected something that makes it disappear. So I'm going to choose again. I'm now on the red square that says positive. Whoops, no I'm not. Let me try that again. Be patient here. Okay, and then I drag down to a hole here. Okay, so what I have now is a wire that goes from the positive terminal of the voltmeter okay, down to the positive terminal of the resistor. And that's my what is equivalent to my red lead on my multimeter. In fact, I'm going to make this wire red. Okay, no, not that one. It's just going to leave the normal wire, but red. Okay, and that reminds me that it's associated with um, the positive terminal. I'm going to then take a wire and run it from the negative terminal of the voltmeter, like this, and I'm going to run it down to the negative terminal of the resistor. I just need to get it in one of the holes that the um, right hand terminal is connected to. So I'll just go there. Okay, and here's another one where I want to change the color because I want this to correspond to the black lead for the voltmeter. So once I have those leads in place, um, I can expect that once I turn the circuit on and get it going, that I'm going to see the voltage across that resistor. So let me start the simulation now. Actually, I'm going to put away these components and then I'll start the simulation. Okay, and sure enough, I do expect the voltage to change because I'm turning the power on and off by that's how the blank circuit works. You turn it on and off and on and off and when it's on I'm seeing a voltage of two and a quarter volts across that resistor. Okay, let me stop the simulation. I want to make some changes. If I swap these leads, okay, I want to put the black uh, lead so I attach it to the positive terminal and then the red lead I'll attach to the negative terminal. Let me just switch places here. Okay, in order to do that I need to take this black one and move it out of the way. So I'll just put it down here temporarily and I'll take this other lead and move it to... Oops, I gotta do this right. Let's see, what am I doing here? Nope, I'm doing it wrong. It thinks that I want a new thing. Okay, so this, this can happen sometimes. It happens to me a lot where instead of selecting a wire I end up mistakenly drawing a new one and I don't want to do that so I'm gonna just let go and I'm gonna control Z and then it goes away okay and now I'm gonna reselect I'm gonna select this wire I better move away from the terminal because when I go up here uh, there's what I'm if I click now what I'm doing is starting a new wire again which I don't want to do I want to take an existing wire so I gotta make sure I, I'm not on top of a, any kind of hole when I do this I select an existing wire and I've done it now that I see that I've done it. I see that both ends are circles and then I can grab one of those circular ends and shift it over to the other terminal. Okay, so there we go. Now I'm going to go back and get this black wire. Okay, I'd like to select the black wire and I want to move the top terminal up here. Okay, so I've swapped the wires for the voltmeter and now I want to start the simulation again. I'm trying to find the voltage across the same element, it's the resistor, but I've swapped the leads. And what am I seeing? I'm seeing the same voltages, but they're negative now. Okay, why is that? It's because um, rather than putting my um, positive lead 
on the terminal of the resistor that I expect the current to be flowing into. It's now on the terminal that the current is flowing out of. And when I get these negative voltages, what that's telling me is that the current is flowing in the opposite direction from what I assumed. That's all. And the, in terms of magnitude, it's the same. It's just giving me a different direction. So there's that. Um, so that's how we measure voltage. I'm going to switch these terminals back because uh, it's kind of confusing me a little bit here. <laughs> I think I better do this before I forget what I've done. All right, I'm going to take this um, black wire and move it. I need to move it. So I've selected it and I'm just going to put it down here. And then I'm going to move this red one. Select that one, move it back over here, and then I'm going to go back to the black one again. No, no, I did the wrong thing. Okay, I'm going to do Control Z. That'll just undo what I just did. That's fine. So I'm selecting the black, and now I'm selecting that circle, and I'm going to move this thing up to the negative terminal. Okay, so now once again, I have it back so that. The red lead corresponds to the positive terminal of the voltmeter, and the black lead corresponds to the negative terminal of the voltmeter. And that goes along with the colors here that are on the voltmeter itself. So that's a voltmeter. If I want to measure voltage, I just place these leads across the element that I want to measure the voltage for. Now, if I want to measure the current, I need to do things differently. The current, um, the way that you measure current is by placing the multimeter directly in the path um, through which the current flows and um, changing this uh, modality, of course, the functionality to ammeter. That's one of the things I'm going to have to do. But I'm thinking now about uh, the path. Okay, There's only one path the current is flowing through in this circuit. It's flowing out of the Arduino over to the resistor, through the resistor, through the diode, and then back through the yellow wire to the Arduino. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to insert um, the multimeter as an ammeter into the path between the resistor and the diode. Now right now the resistor and the diode are joined in row 5. So what I'm going to have to do is separate them. Uh, I'm going to take the diode and I'm going to move it using my keys, I'm going to move it over, I think three spaces is good. So now the um, anode is in row 8, and the other end of the resistor is in row 5 still. So the next thing I'm going to do is move the multimeter so that um, the negative terminal, okay, actually maybe I'll move the positive terminal first, the positive terminal is going to go to row 5. Okay. I'm going to have to move this one first. Okay, I, what I want to do is connect one of the leads to row 5 and the other lead to row 8. And I think what I'm going to do is move the black one first. That's the one that's going to go in row 8. So now that I've selected this wire, I'm going to grab the end of it down here and just move this to row 8. Okay, so it's in the same row as the, um, as the LED. And then I'm going to take the red wire and I'm going to select the lower end of it and make sure that it's in the same row as the right end of the resistor. So now I have the path is Arduino through the blue wire to the resistor and then through the resistor to the red lead to the ammeter through the ammeter through the black wire to the LED. Okay, but then things stop. Okay, I have the, lo the longer leg is where the current enters. Okay, and that's going to work. And then goes to the LED and it's supposed to go out the cathode or shorter leg. And I have to figure out how I'm going to connect that. Well, I need to use the yellow wire for that because I need to connect that cathode over to ground. So the yellow wire was doing that job before. I need to move it. Oops, nope, I did the wrong thing again. Let me hit Control Z. Okay, what I want to do is select this yellow wire. Okay, so I'm mousing it and I see a blue outline. I gotta select it. Select. Okay, and now I'm gonna grab 
this right end of the wire and move it over to row, um, I think it's row 9, where the uh, shorter leg of the LED is. And that's connected to ground. And so now I have a complete path that includes the Arduino, the resistor, the ammeter, the LED, and then back to ground on the Arduino. The other thing I have to do before I start is I have to go back up to the multimeter and I need to change it so that it's not a voltmeter anymore, it's an ammeter. Okay, and now that I've done this, I want to start the simulation. So let's try this. Okay, so while the voltmeter is on, uh, not the voltmeter, one, while the um, Arduino is sending out voltage, has a high voltage at pin 13, I see that I have a current of 10.2 milliamps. Great. It does vary and that's to be expected as I change the uh, voltage from low to high to low to high and so on, then the current is going to vary as well. And you see the light going on. So this is all working great. Alright, so this is how to use um, the Tinkercad um, circuit building capability. This is just a little introduction to it. So there are a couple more things I want to talk about that we can do. Um, one thing that we are able to do is change the name of this particular circuit. Um, when we start working on a project, Tinkercad just picks this name. It's usually two words long and it's kind of a nonsense name. Okay, It'll have two words and you can change it to anything you want. You just have to click on it. Okay, I'm just going to leave it as shiny stancia. Okay, I have no idea what a stancia is, but here we are. Um, and then if I leave Tinkercad, I log out and I come back, this um, simulation will be sitting there, not, not working anymore, but the actual setup of the board and the wires and whatnot that I have here will be sitting there so I can come back to it if I want to. It's saved automatically. I can do other things too. Um, for example, let me just stop the simulation here. Let me look at the code again. Okay, um, I can take this code and you'll see that I did actually modify it a little bit. I just changed the amount of time that the LED was on. I can download this. Okay, So I can take this code and if I click on download then I wind up with a download that has the same name as what I started with, okay, the shiny stancia, it puts a 1 on there, and then it has an extension of INO. This means that the file is in a format that can be read by my Arduino IDE. Um, I may be asking you um, later on to take um, a file like this and upload it to Canvas as part of an assignment, but this is a way you can save your code, and then you can use it in the Arduino IDE, or you can use it again here if you wish. Um, there are other ways that you can um, save things. There's You can also export um, the, the picture here. Um, we're not going to do that ever, but that's a, that is a possibility that you could do that. All right, I'm going to put the code away. Um, the other thing that we can do is um, maintain a record of what we've done, what the board setup is, or show it to somebody else, and that would be by taking a screenshot. Um, if you look at your laptop and you're using an ASUS laptop, um, you'll see that there is a key uh, along the top row that's marked PRTSC and then it says SYSRQ on, on it, on the key. Um, if you click on that key, then it allows you to uh, make a screenshot. You can grab part of the screen. Okay, You want to draw a rectangle. Okay, let's say I want to capture uh, the board, not the USB connector, but the board, and I want to include the whole breadboard. Okay, so I click and then I start drawing a rectangle. I'm dragging it, dragging, dragging, okay, and then when I let go, um, in order for me to take the screenshot, I'm, I can double click or I can press enter. Let me press enter. Okay, I just did it and then I've got this area, okay, and I can do stuff to this. If I want to edit this, I can do so, or I can just download it, okay, if I save it, 
then I'm going to wind up with a JPEG file, okay, and that is the screenshot. And that's another thing that you might want to upload to Canvas as part of an assignment uh, to show the layout of the circuit that you built. So those are just a couple of things that we can do. Um, and we'll look at some other things as we go with this. There, as we introduce other components, there'll be other things that we'll be able to do with them. Um, other th uh, capabilities of this simulator that we can use to help us understand the circuits better and to build um, the real ones as well.